When I was a teenager, I went to the doctor and I said to him, I've got this feeling like pain is leaking out of me and I can't regulate it and I can't control it and I don't understand it. He said, there's a chemical in people's brains called serotonin. Some people are naturally lacking it. You're clearly one of them. I'm going to give you these drugs to boost your serotonin level. You're going to feel better. And it was like a kind of chemical kiss. And I felt this immediate relief, which, of course, can't have been due to the chemicals immediately because that's not how it works. To be given a story about your pain is one of the most powerful things that can ever happen to you, especially if it's a story that explains rightly it's not your fault. You shouldn't feel ashamed for feeling this way. And a few months later, this kind of sense of pain started to come back. So I went back to the doctor. He gave me a higher dose. Again, I felt a real increase in relief. Again, the pain came back. This kind of process went on till I was taking the maximum possible dose with a couple of short breaks for 13 years. And at the end of it, I was still depressed. In Britain today, one in 11 people is taking a chemical antidepressant. It's having to drug themselves to get through the day. There are far more people who are depressed and anxious who are not drugging themselves to get through the day. And I wanted to understand what's going on. Why do so many people in our culture feel like this? So I decided to go on a big, long journey. I ended up going over 40,000 miles and sitting with some of the world's leading social scientists and neuroscientists and, people, and pharmacologists who've studied these questions. And I also wanted to meet with people who had just had really interesting non-scientific perspectives on depression. So for example, I spent a load of time in an Amish village because there's really interesting evidence that the Amish have very low levels of depression. And I think the main thing I learned is both that the story I was told by my doctor was wrong and there is a different story that has been known about by scientists for a very long time. And then I just saw this statement by the World Health Organization quite early in my research, it was in 2011. Mental health is produced socially and it needs social as well as individual solutions. That mental, mental health is a social indicator. Dr. David Healy, one of the experts here in Britain in, in Wales, said to me, you can't even say that story is discredited because there's never a time when it was credited. And because we've built our primary response to depression, on that story, we're not getting particularly good results. So there's something called the Hamilton scale, which measures depression. You know, uh, if you're at zero on the Hamilton scale, you're dancing around on ecstasy, basically. And then if you're number 59, you would be acutely suicidal. And what Professor Irving Kirsch at Harvard showed is when you look at the real results from the clinical trials of anti chemical antidepressants, the movement you get on the Hamilton scale is 1.8 points. Which, to give you a sense of perspective, if you improve your sleep patterns, you get an improvement of six points on the Hamilton scale. I learned that there's scientific evidence for nine causes of depression and anxiety. Two of them are biological, I'm happy to talk about them, and seven of them are things that are happening in the way we live, many of which are rising, which explains this epidemic we have. That you, everyone in this room and everyone you've ever met has certain natural physical needs, right? You need food, you need water, you need clean air. And if I took any of those things away from you, you would go wrong very quickly. There's equally strong evidence that human beings have natural psychological needs. You need to feel you belong. You need to feel your life has meaning and purpose. You need to feel that people value you and see you. You need to feel that you have a future that is stable and that you understand. And our culture is very good at many things, and I'm glad to be alive now, but our culture is getting less and less good at meeting some of those basic psychological needs for enormous numbers of people. And I think the scientists I've spoken to have demonstrated that, that is the key reason, not the only one, it's important to stress that, but that's the key reason why we have this rising depression and anxiety crisis. I want to talk about one example. So I started to look at some of the evidence about this. Gallup actually did the most detailed study that's ever been done about how people feel about their work. And it's quite striking. So what they found is 13% of us like our work. We enjoy it, look forward to it, and get energy from it most of the time. 63% of us are what they called sleepwalking through their work. So they don't like it, they don't hate it, a lot of approving nods there in the audience. And 24% of people hate their jobs, fear them, dread them, and are drained by them. So you think about that, that means 87% of people don't like the thing they're doing with most of their waking life, and you're almost twice as likely to hate your job as love your job. And I learned there was an incredible Australian social scientist who's a friend of the RSA called Professor Michael Marmot who'd researched this. He discovered the key factor in work that makes people depressed and anxious. If you feel you are controlled, if you feel that you don't have autonomy in your work, if you feel that you're just like a drone doing what you're ordered to do, you are significantly more likely to become depressed and anxious. In fact, you're significantly more likely to have a heart attack. Given he's proven this causal mechanism, this is clearly a factor in why we have a depression and anxiety crisis. And I did not want to just diagnose the problem. I'd obviously been through this myself. I wanted to find solutions. So I started thinking, but what would be a way we could apply that insight? There's a woman called Meredith Keogh in Baltimore who I met. Meredith used to go to bed 
every Sunday night just sick with anxiety. Had an office job, it wasn't the worst office job in the world, she wasn't bullied or anything, but it was monotonous and she couldn't bear the thought this was going to be the next 40 years of her life. So one day Meredith with her husband Josh decided to do something bold. Josh worked in a bike shop and one day Josh and his friends who worked in the bike store just said, what does our boss actually do? They liked their boss, he wasn't a bad guy, but they fixed all the bikes. They decided to do something a bit different. They set up a bike store that worked in a different way. It's called Baltimore Bicycle Works. It's a democratic cooperative. They don't have a boss. They take all the big decisions together. They share out the good, good tasks and the bad tasks. They share all the profits, obviously. When I went to Baltimore Bicycle Works, which is a thriving business, one thing that was so interesting is how many of the people there talked about how they had been depressed and anxious in this previous controlled way of working, and they no longer felt that way. They still have bad days, of course, but they no longer felt depressed and anxious, which completely fits with Professor Michael Marmot's findings. It's not like they quit their jobs fixing bikes and went to become, you know, backing singers for Beyonce, right? They fixed bikes before, they fix bikes now. What changed was the factor that causes depression and anxiety, which is the control. And as Josh put it to me, there's no reason why any business has to run in this depression-causing way, right? Actually, a study at Cornell University found more democratic businesses grow four times faster because the workers are more committed because you've got more brains on every task. So to me, that is an antidepressant. It's an intervention in our lives that reduces depression and anxiety, and I found evidence for seven different antidepressants like that, which should be appearing alongside the option of chemical antidepressants. Thank you.